Out of the category of you can't believe this, during that break, they issued a weather warning here that a lightning storm is approaching, and they asked everyone for their personal safety to move to the shelter of the concourses in an orderly manner. And the teams have been sent to their locker rooms. This on a night that well, about three, four hours ago, there was a 20% chance of a possible shower, but and we've seen the radar now here in the last minute, and you can see a whole line of storms is approaching the Green Bay area. This was earlier as the Packers go in. That 14-0 lead after one quarter. The Bears had just uh, picked up a big gainer and a first down on the last play of the opening quarter to push the football to the Packers side of the field. And there was Fox earlier sending his team in. And uh, Tracy, let's go down to you while you're still out there. Well, thanks a lot, Jim. I spoke with head official John Hussey, and he told me that the weather is supposed to clear by about 831. He also said he's going to notify the teams every five minutes with updates. Once they are clear, the teams can take the field and they will have about three to five minutes to warm up and then they can resume again, assuming there is no more lightning in the area, Jim. All right. Thank you, Tracy. Got to give it to John Hussey. He didn't say 8.30. He didn't say 8.35. <laughs> he said 8.31. Okay. You're, here you are refereeing a game, I, and you've got it down to the minute. That would right. be about, what, 15 minutes time. Have you ever been in a situation like this? I did one time. But they, I just saw the lightning storm right there. I just saw it, so it's probably oh, good. a good decision. Yeah. But uh, uh, one time I did, and it, it makes it – you go back in, and it's a start-over type of feeling. And you got to go back out and warm up. And mentally, this might have been a good thing for Chicago. Absolutely. This gets them a chance to, you know, that feeling you had, which is really not good when you start on the road with a couple of turnovers the way they did. Mentally, you can start over and pretend like that doesn't matter and go out there. For Green Bay, you know, they just got to come out and play ball, but this actually affected them as far as momentum goes mm -hmm. a little bit more than they would have liked. And you saw a bolt, and this is what our tape machines captured. Wow. That tape machine, can, you know, he's either really, really good or that was the longest lightning bolt of all time. Of course, there was a, a lightning delay just a week and a half ago in Denver for the Dallas-Denver game. And that one uh, took just over an hour. They're saying here somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 minutes. And I would say maybe a little more than half of the fans here have already managed to make their way out of the stands and onto the concourse level. There's, of course, this was about as bad a start, getting back to the game, as you could imagine for the Bears. Their first snap was a strip sack by Matthews, recovered by Ryan, led to a touchdown. There was another miscue, recovered by Martinez. Rodgers tossing a couple of touchdown passes. A five-yarder to Adams. Two-yard touchdown throw to Randall Cobb. And Green Bay leads it 14 to nothing. So we're going to have, it's right on the quarter change, by the way, the quarter break. So we get a play resume with basically, again, they're forecasting about 15 minutes. In essence, we have two half times here tonight, or you know, two times to go to the locker room for about a 15-minute break. At the end of the first quarter, the end of the second quarter. And, uh, and there's Aaron Rodgers staying dry. Here goes Aaron Rodgers today. You see him a few times. Just do a good job on the RPOs. Does a good job just getting into the right players, and then throws that ball perfectly right out in front on a good route by Cobb. He knows this is a big one because they're home. They didn't play great last week, but they won. And uh, it's as good a start as Green Bay could have hoped for. They ran the ball well to start the game. The one issue you'd be concerned about is Montgomery being hurt. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and Josh Jones as well. Now it's uh, starting to come down pretty heavily here in the rain. <laughs> you, you know what I find funny? They just said, they just said, you see the rain coming down. They just said, hey, we got lightning, everybody. Please go to safety. And everyone's like, ah, we'll slowly move and everything. But as soon as it rains, right. they can't moving. physically hurt you. They're going to run to the exits. You got everybody sprinting right now. Settle down, everyone. Jim's got plenty of room <laughs> up here for you. I noticed you've moved to the back of the booth now just to get a little more protection. Don't blame you. Well, I mean, honestly, <laughs> I'm like a little flower at this point. I used to play football, but, you know, now we're going to keep ourselves dry. 
crazy weather here in your home state. We had on Sunday, it was 90 degrees at kickoff, which was the warmest home game in Green Bay Packer history. And just down the road at Soldier Field, the Bears had their warmest game in over a well, over 25 years, but the warmest ever at 90 on Sunday, and then the big storm came through here Tuesday night. No one was expecting uh, anything like this at game time tonight. Again, it was supposed to be just a partly cloudy, comfortable night. It was 64 at kickoff. It was going to drop into the mid-50s. This is insane. I mean, look at the wind. The wind just shifted. If it stays like this wind-wise and rain, it's going to be a lot. I mean, people are – I feel like I'm watching American Beauty. Remember that thing that floated in the wind out there? I almost just caught four different bags that walked by, and they're just literally hanging right here right now. This is a, this is a different scene. And they think it'll be over pretty quick. You know, hey, one thing I wanted to talk about, Jim – as we go back to the Glennon Trubisky topic, okay? Yeah, why do you think Trubisky right now, and I know it's just one quarter into the game, gives him a better option? Well, I'm not saying tonight, and I'm not saying future, but or like what part of the future? What you're going to find, though, is it's a unique situation, a first-rounder, but you went out and got this free agent guy. We're going to talk about it. A lot of stuff to talk about. We're going to take you to the studio when we continue during a delay of Thursday Night Football. All right, the league's oldest rivalry has given us something new. That would be Lightning at Lambeau as play has been suspended at the beginning of the second quarter with the Packers up 14 to zip over the Chicago Bears. We are dry and safe inside of our LA-based studios. I'm Chris Rose, joined by Super Bowl champion David Carr. And uh, play has been suspended momentarily. The referee's going to go into the locker rooms and keep the teams abreast of the situation. What's going on every five minutes or so? We expect perhaps a 15, 20-minute delay right now. So what's going on inside of those locker rooms? A whole lot of nothing. I mean, <laughs> they're excited to play a football game. No one wants a second halftime before the first one. So it, it's, it's going to be difficult for guys to stay in the same rhythm. You're going to want to go warm up again, but... They'll usher you back on the field, and then it'll feel like you're starting the game all over, but it's already started, so it's a weird feeling. All right, let's break down what we've seen the first uh, 15 minutes. And Green Bay playing without its bookend tackles. Yep. Both are inactive. Aaron Rodgers, we expect a lot of quick passes, and yep. that's what we've seen in the early going. Exactly, and I like their philosophy coming in. They decided that, okay, yes, I understand. Now, we, we are limited up front. We don't want to get Aaron beat up like we did last week, so we'll move the pocket. This was a third and one play where they could have easily ran the football. They had been running the football really well early on. Ty Montgomery leaves with what we know is a chest injury, and if he doesn't come back, I mean, he was averaging five and a half yards a carry. That's why they were able to do that, and then the quick passing game has been effective, and then Chicago just hasn't been very good on offense on the other side. Mike Lennon has uh, connected on three of four passes. However, two critical turnovers, a pair of fumbles so far, one that bounced off his knee waiting for a shotgun snap. What's going on with the Chicago offense? And sometimes I feel like when I'm watching them and they're down 14 nothing, it feels like 28 nothing. It did, and you said that in the grave. It did feel like it was down 28 nothing, four scores, because there really wasn't a lot of firepower, no hope really up front. I mean, they tried to play action pass early in the game, first play of the game. Clay Matthews obviously comes around. I get that you guys can run the football, but play action pass, it's a little, it's a little bit of a stretch on the first play, especially with the guys cranked up. And then this is almost a lateral. Just, just some bad down the field mechanics. Some of the routes were just locked up. They didn't really have Glenn. Didn't have anywhere to throw it except to dump it down and man they went last week they went all the way into the fourth quarter five minutes left before a receiver even caught a pass mm -hmm. and so you're seeing a lot of the same stuff it's going to be if you can focus on those running backs in the backfield you can pretty much stop what they're doing everybody wants to focus on the quarterback situation they made the trade up from three to two to pick up Mitchell Trubisky who made only 13 starts in his career at North Carolina but because of the lack of firepower on the outside how much is Mike Lennon to blame Mike Glennon, he's not to blame. I, I think that he's a, he's a good football player. He's a quarterback that has played well in this league before. Um, he's a guy that is, I think is a good fit for them. I think he's a guy that can come in and he can hold the position. But Mitchell Trubisky is the future of this football team. And I think Tony Romo, when you listen to him, he was saying some good things about th this team is a pretty good offensive line up front mm -hmm. if you can run the football with those backs. And then if you had a quarterback that could move the pocket, that could get out on the edge, get on the perimeter, much like what we saw Mitchell do in the preseason. He looked fantastic at it. Is he ready? I don't know. I'm not in that huddle. I'm not in the locker room. I don't know what he's going through day in and day out, how he's understanding the verbiage, understanding you know how to play quarterback in the league as far as a preparation standpoint. But 
physically what I saw, he would be a perfect fit for this offense uh -huh. right now and give him a little bit of a spark, I think. Uh, he was the second pick of the 2017 draft. You were the first pick of the 2002 draft, and you started from ago. day one. That's right. No, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> it, was <laughs> it was like 15 it. years. You got a few okay. brave yeah, a little bit. I got going a little on in there. Um, when do you think he's ready? I understand that we're not inside of the locker room, sure. but this is a team that is rebuilding. They, they got to see him at some point, no, right? No, I, I agree. I, I think that the only people that are going to really know are his, his quarterback coach, his head coach, the guys that see him every day and see the progress that he makes. I think that he'll show you. He won't really show you on the practice field. That's the hard part. And we talked about that a little bit earlier, too, is really he's just running the scout team. So it, it's hard to stay in rhythm of your offense when you're running Green Bay Packers stuff all week. So for him, a lot of it's going to be in the film room. Is he prepared? When you ask him questions pregame, the night before, does he get it? And, and it's hard to tell. I think but he the only looked way you're great during the preseason. He did. I mean, great. He did. He really did. It. We get it. It's a different animal. But there are Bears fans that are out there clamoring for Mitchell Trubisky. And I and I understand. And honestly, if it, if I was them, I think that I would I would feel good enough with what I saw in the preseason. And honestly, how this team is built, it's not like you're going to ask him to come out there and throw the ball 40 times a game, right? They don't even throw it to the wide receivers. All we want you to do is run the ball, get some play action off of it, like what. We saw with Aaron Rodgers on the third and one to Martellus Bennett. We want you to do that. Provide a spark. Take care of the football. I think that Mitchell could do it. I think that he would actually he would actually improve this football team. So I'm not, I don't, I would not hesitate at all to put Mitchell in this football game. All right, big picture with the NFC North. So you've got the Bears and the Packers kicking it off tonight on Thursday night football. Sunday, you've got the Lions and the Vikings. Is it a three-team race in your opinion? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's still it's still early, and so you're still kind of waiting to see. I really like Minnesota. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Detroit will be there, and, and then I think Green Bay, obviously, with Aaron Rodgers, you can never count them out. But Minnesota's interesting to me because with Thielen and Diggs and Dalvin Cook is a, is a special back that can catch the ball to the backfield. You know, it, it's really weird when you see Adrian Peterson, you see a star leave a team, you see Calvin Johnson leave the line, you see Adrian Peterson leave Minnesota, their offenses suddenly improve because more people are involved and they spread the football around. There's not a focus that we have to get it to our workhorse. So, you know, for me, I think you can't count out Minnesota, which is such a good defense. doesn't really matter who's playing quarterback right but now. But is this the team to beat? The Packers have been to the postseason eight straight yep. years, won the division last year, right? Yeah, I absolutely. I think that you're right. I mean, Green Bay, they're going to figure out. Obviously, they'll get guys back. The, the tackles will become healthy again, and you'll see Aaron Rodgers back there. I mean, what he did last week against Cincinnati – was tremendous. I mean, with the pressure he was facing to still find a way to win that football game, I don't know if there's another quarterback, Tom Brady maybe, that would go out and win that football game. He did a fantastic job, so you can never count these guys out. All right, we're less than a minute back from uh, sending you out to Lambeau Field because we understand that the weather is getting a little bit better out there, and hopefully they will resume play shortly. But uh, very quickly here, it, it's imperative that the Bears get something on this drive. They'll yeah. start with the ball here in the second quarter inside of Packers territory. 100%. They have to score here because you give it back to Green Bay. They've looked unstoppable running the football. Aaron can pretty much do what he wants. I think it's Green Bay all the way if they can't find a way to score here. Once again, it is 14 and nothing. We are under a weather delay at Lambeau Field with lightning in the area. However, things are improving. Let's send it out to our weatherman and more, Jim Nance. <laughs> Chris, thank you. Yeah, I think the um, most vicious part of that uh, Mean Spirit itself has uh, started to move to the east, and it's still raining, but just barely, and the winds have definitely died down. But everyone remains, uh, only the great majority of them have uh, gone into shelter on the concourse level and into the ramps. And for more on uh, what we're hearing as far as return to action, let's uh, go back down to Tracy. Jim, I just spoke with the officials a little while ago, about 10 more minutes until the players can take the field, and then they will be given a 10-minute warm-up. Though the officials will continuously update both teams every five minutes, so that certainly can change. I'm outside the Packers' locker room right now. No word on what's going on inside. My vision is... You know, they're sitting around eating a bunch of bratwursts and having some cheese curds. Wouldn't you be doing that if you were in the middle of a rain delay? That's actually what exactly what we're doing up here in the booth. <laughs> All right, Tracy, thank you. Yeah, we're hearing that uh, once they do bring the teams back out, that they're going to actually give them a little warm-up period of about 10 minutes. And, I mean, just, you know, looking at things right now, you got to think soon they will be coming back out. you got to think soon they will be coming back out here. Yeah, they're going to come back out. And, you know, you're going to go through a little bit of a quick stretch warm-up routine, similar to what they did before the game and everyone will just get mentally the hardest part is getting right back into this mode of you know here comes a game it's a big deal we got to lay it on the line and that's that's really what you're trying to get to mentally when you come back 
And again, this is why we're waiting for those of you who just joined us. All of a sudden, a cell approached, and it uh, cleared the area here in a hurry during the quarter change. All of a sudden, uh, everyone was warned, and they did a good job getting everybody uh, alerted and the teams off the field, and there were some bolts that were nearby. And then the high winds and some heavy rains coming out of that cell. Look at these people. That's a, I mean, I tell you what, Jim, that was a really rough 15 minutes for yeah. us. I mean, I was involved in that. Yeah. Not necessarily involved like them, but that was just tough to see that a little bit out in front of me. I've been to too many events where you really don't want to make, uh, you don't want to make light of it, though. I mean, you're sitting no, on you metal bleachers and something bad like this. Things no, I, they have the old school bleachers out there, too. Yeah. And you know, it's not quite as. Uh, I bet safe. there's some Bears fans out here who might remember uh, because I, our crew was at this game in 2013 at Soldier Field uh, when the Baltimore Ravens came in to play Chicago and I believe it was 2013 and uh, there were going into the game there were forecasts that were threatening skies and sure enough yes a, a tornado warning was issued and uh, everyone was sent in the teams were sent in uh, all the the fans at, at soldier field went onto the concourse level and that delay lasted over an hour and a half and we ended up sending it back to uh, jb and the crew back in the studio on on that occasion so uh, the bears uh, four years ago in somewhat of a similar situation They've just taken, I mean, they did a heck of a job here. There's nobody in the lower bowl out here. I mean, everyone is off. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've just allowed them to subtly come back in, but they got everybody out of here. It's a great job, you know, by the personnel here working the stadium and the, and the police force. I mean, really well done. It's a magnificent facility here that uh, really is open all year long for tours, and people make the pilgrimage here to Packerland to go through the Hall of Fame, go through the, the tour and the chance to walk out onto Lambeau Field. And tonight they organized it well, getting people into a safe area here. We're hoping that the teams will be returning to the field shortly, but right now we're going to return to our studio in Culver, California. All right, Jim Nance, thank you very much. Uh, we've multiplied up here. We've added a couple of defenders. <laughs> Super Bowl <laughs> champions DeMarcus Ware, Willie McGinnis are with me. Have either of you been through a significant weather delay during your playing career? I mean, when I was with the Dallas Cowboys, it was almost a two-hour rain delay. Oh, and don't we say that. There. Yes. Don't say that. It was a two-hour <laughs> rain delay. Because oh, the thing is, geez. when it's lightning in Dallas, it's flat in Texas. You can see it from far yeah. away. And it was so long, we had to sit there and wait the whole time. All right, now hold on a second. We, we, we understand that hopefully the players are going to be allowed back <laughs> out there to warm up within five minutes. What do you do during a two-hour weather delay? Actually, you go in the locker room and you sit there and play music half the time and figure out, okay, if it's lightning seven minutes, now you got a two, another 30 minute wait that you have. And all the guys, we try to figure out, okay, where we're, what we're doing wrong on defense from a, a defensive standpoint. Time, yeah. It's a mini halftime, yeah. but after two a while, hours, two, two two hours, hours, yeah. 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 after a while, you a get cold, game. your body gets cold, <laughs> and you have to go up, go back out there and warm up all over again. Everything starts over. I was waiting for like a nap. I hit nah, the spread. No nap. Chill no out. nap at all. Headphones no nap. back on. <laughs> all right, so uh, hopefully we will get back to action. Once again, the Packers are leading this one 14 nothing thanks to Aaron Rodgers, who's been busy here in the first half. A couple of TD tosses. They've had him on the move nicely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, really, that was a third and one play because they were running the football so effectively, they were able to actually call that football play, get Martellus on the edge. It was nice. All right, so once again, it is 14 to nothing. Uh, hopefully the weather will start clearing. It's good enough so that the CBS crew can take over. Let's send it out right now to James Brown at Lambeau Field. All right, Chris, I'm sure you are enjoying the uh, the wonderful studio digs that we have here in the hallway <laughs> leading out to the field. Uh, JB, along with uh, Coach Bill Cowan, Deion Sanders and let's take a look again from a coaching perspective we've gone through this at the Super Bowl down in New Orleans what do you do from a coach's perspective you are both a player and a coach well I mean I think right now obviously they're back in the locker rooms and waiting to hear what the word is going to be when they're going to come back out talking about what has transpired in this first quarter uh, plus and I you know as I sensed this game Deion I said you know the Green Bay came out with the energy the crowd the national anthem they, they came out with the energy and went right down the field got the turnover but since that time Chicago has settled into this game and I just wonder going back out there on this field has slowed down this turf with the rain does that not play to Chicago's uh, advantage from the standpoint of their running game not whatsoever because still you got to understand they're down by 14 that plays mentally on your mind and you're on the road so it should be a lot of coaching transpiring right now tell us what's going on tell us the game plan what are we going to go out there and change because the way we started that didn't work 
So now we got to counter that and be productive in some sort of way. It's hard to deal with Aaron Rodgers in, in, in any climate, and, and, and he is all that he's chalked up to be. And I want to say this. If I'm John Fox, I'm saying, listen, I'll tell you right now, the momentum has switched in this game because you know what? We turned it over. We've turned it over twice. We've weathered the storm, so to speak. Literally and, speaking. Uh, literally. Mm -hmm. And so, but uh, as we're coming out, let's finish this drive. They've killed them the punts the last two series. You kind of feel a little bit of them getting a feel for this team right now. Chicago, that being on both sides of the ball. Their offensive lines and their defensive lines are superior right now, in my mind, to Green Bay. I will say the defensive front of Green Bay right now, they've done a good job. They came out with a big front seven. They've stuffed a little bit of the running game. But I love right now putting Tariq Owen and, Joe, and, and, and Howard on the field at the same time. We saw a little bit of that package right there. It gives them a little bit of speed on that field. So it'll be interesting to see how this drive unfolds. If they can go down and score, we have a football so game. So talk about, again, an attitude change, Coach, and I hear you. I would get excited hearing you say that about me because it was like Keystone Cops in the first half. What right. could go wrong, went wrong. Attitudinally as a player, are you buying what Coach is saying to you? Attitude as a player, you got to really define yourself. What are you doing? Are you providing what you need to provide? Are you that guy that you're chalked up to be? Are you that guy that you're supposed to be? Are you dominating your player? What can you do to give your team a better chance at winning this game? It, it seems like it's two different teams playing out there. You're right, Coach. The Chicago Bears, they're mustering up something. They're at least putting up a fight right now. But Aaron Rodgers hadn't even gotten loose yet. They didn't hadn't even hit any hit any big plays yet. Uh, yeah, it's been turnovers and, and they've been fortunate. They've cashed in on them, but you haven't seen the best football for the Green Bay Packers as well either. And then Ty Montgomery is out of this game, it looks like right now. And I just I just get a sense in this game right now for the Chicago Bears, a little bit of a momentum switch. And again, you have to go down and finish this drive. You've turned the ball over twice. You have kind of weathered that initial flurry of energy that was going to exist in Lambeau Field on a Thursday night. And so right now, John Fox Let's get back to doing what we do best. You know, right now, you, you look at Mike Lennon. He's made a bad first series, first play of the game, sack, fumble. But since that time, he's kind of settled in. He had to turn over with the knee. They were driving then. It was, it was a miscommunication between him and the center. So, you know, I wouldn't be too quick to pull the plug on, uh, on Mike Lennon because right now it's not more about him. It's about right now them settling in and finishing this drive. Even getting the field goal, we still have a football game. See, what if they go down 21 28 nothing well, 20, before half time. Well, what do you down. do what do you do do you go with the new quarterback do you throw the guy in there again the wolves on the road in a game of this magnitude, do you do that, Coach? Well, I, I think if you get down 21 points, and depending on how this game unfolds, um, you would have to consider it, I would think. But I would say right now, where they are and with what's taking place, I would certainly stay with it because you're 14-0 and you are driving once again, and they were down there last time and they fumbled the ball. So I think this game is, is again, the momentum is going to Chicago, but they have to finish this drive. So let me just pull back uh, for those who may either just be tuning in or folks who are trying to get an update on what's going to happen. We've just been told that in about 10 minutes or less, the players will be going back onto the field. That storm cell that you've heard Jim Nance talking about as well has moved off of the area. The big concern was lightning. So the players will be back in about 10 minutes to warm up right now. For the latest, let's go to Tracy Wolfson. Yeah, that's ex exactly right, JB. They will take the field at about 8.50 and warm up for 10 minutes. I mean, that is all could change because of if they see more lightning in the area. And they just inform both teams of that, and they will continue continue to inform them throughout this delay but I was told in the Bears locker room right now they're just trying to stay loose talking about the game hydrating stretching as for Green Bay I was told what they're doing no music whatsoever going on inside they're just going on talking about the game and the biggest thing is they're concerned about their energy level because they're worried they can get back out on the field and this can be a whole different ball game JB all right, Tracy, and um, uh, thank you for that information as well. One of the things I was going to mention 200 years ago, probably before Dion was born, <laughs> when I was doing play-by-play, -play, we made many visits here as one of the lower announced teams when <laughs> Green Bay wasn't that good. One of the things I can say is that the fans here are some, not only the most knowledgeable, some of the most uh, civil and cooperative, but as you take a look here, the fans have certainly complied with security, law enforcement, stadium officials, to be safely out of the open bowl. They are in the corridors uh, looking out onto the field, so they're safely out of here. Great job done by everyone who was responsible for getting these fans safely out of the open areas to wait there for a short period 
when their storm passes over. You know, these, I mean, these fans are some of the best. No question. In, in football. Was that Win not, or loss, they're some of the best fans, and they're consistent. And I... And here's a weather map you can see right now as you're looking at it. You're going to see that the front as it's going to go through and come through. And I don't, you know, there's a storm going through on the weather map. But I got to say this. If you didn't have a chance to see the opening of this football game, mm. the fans were chanting USA before right. the national anthem even took place. It was awesome. to just a feeling in that whole stadium. It felt good. me goosebumps going up and down my spine. Coach, no. did Coach just do the weather for us? Yes, yeah, hey, hey, I did a nice job. Coach, Dion. Coach, you <laughs> forgot to point to the side, Coach, so you can show <laughs> no, precipitation. No, no. Hey, for those at home who don't know, we don't have a monitor in front of us. Yeah, coach did so that Coach was right. listening to Sean Robbins, our producer, talking about the weather cell that was passing east of us here over the stadium. And again, we did watch the weather reports this morning where it was indicated that there would be a passing storm. But again, because lightning was associated with it, the fans had to be evacuated, the players off the field, and all of that was done in in superb fashion, and the fans cooperated, so we are very thankful for that. But again, just as the weather forecasters has indicated, they will be back out on the field in just about 10 minutes. So we'll find out how good the weather casters in Culver you know, like City, California, are good job, as we send it back to Chris Rose and company. Oh, <laughs> All right, JB, thank you very much. Uh, this is good news, guys, that fans are piling back into Lambeau Field. Yep. That means things are getting safer out there. We understand perhaps within five minutes, players will start getting back Hopefully. on the field. Uh, how long does it take you to get loosened up once you're back out there? Let's say you've been sitting down Depends for 20 years. <laughs> no, all right, not at this age right now. At we'll the age the that they're line. at, if you're in your mid twenties and in they're, peak they're, condition, they'll be fine. They haven't been in there that long, so I'm sure they're in there doing little things. But they're going over game planning. It's not a two hour delay like this. This right. man was in right. in the locker room, so you don't have to do a, a whole routine all over again. Yeah. All right, uh, who does this benefit more? I mean, the Packers jumped out to a 14 nothing lead. Bears couldn't get out of their own way. They're now on the Packers side of the field. Who's this help out more? I think it just gives the Chicago Bears uh, a little bit more time to prepare on maybe all the mistakes that they made. They can sort of rekindle, hey, this is what we've done bad in this game, and how can we improve from, this, from what, what has happened? So in this whole thing of, okay, this is a, a rain delay or a lightning delay, whatever it is, how can we get better from what we did? Can we restart? Now let's reboot and go out there and play better. And if you listen to Coach, the Bears got the momentum, right? So it probably it probably hurt the Bears because they had the momentum going in before the rain delay, and now the Packers are able to make adjustments and go up to the to the whiteboard and, and, and draw some things yeah. up. So probably it would probably hurt the Chicago Bears, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, especially if they had the momentum. So I, I don't know what's happening. But, yeah, I mean, honestly, though, I mean, if, if it's 14 to nothing, we just got to flip it all over. We got to change it, scratch it, do something it's zero, different. Zero right now. Yeah, we can't, like we can't look at, can't the, come at out the, uh, and the score kick right the ball now. back to the no. Packers. Well, how about again? getting so Cohen get involved? Better. I mean, this is a guy that's been a huge for part sure. of their offense the first three right. weeks, right? Yeah, he's got one touch so far on offense. He, he needs more touches, obviously. And then even you heard them talk about it. he was he was on the field with Howard a little bit. So I think you can be creative a little bit. You don't necessarily have to come out and pound the ball 30 times, but you can get creative and you have both of them out there. Maybe throw the ball out there, get out of your hand quick, and see if you can do something with it. All right. The guys talked a little bit about the, the future quarterback for the Chicago Bears, and we know that they signed Mike Lennon to a three-year deal in the offseason. Then they traded up from three to two to pick Mitchell Trubisky, and when that happened, we knew that Lennon became a placeholder, whether it was for this season, for a game, for a month, whatever it was. When would you guys like to see Mitchell Trubisky under center? I'm not sure, man. I, I, I did get excited when I watched him in the preseason like everybody did, and I, and I know the notion was everybody throw him out there, let him be the starter. He's ready. But there's a lot more to being a quarterback, as David, you know, to being a quarterback, going out, being able to handle a full game with the starters, the ones, and, uh, you know, making adjustments and doing all those things that a quarterback have to deal with. Um, now, I will say this. They can be more creative because he's more athletic. So the game, the game plan and the, and the playbook will open up, which makes it harder for the defense. So I think some of his athleticism gives them opportunity to do more in the, in, in the game planning. I think that's a great point that he makes. And really, by, by doing more from a defensive perspective, it's actually doing less from a quarterback perspective because it's really all off the run game and play action. And really, when you do that stuff, you do it in the preseason. It's some of the, the first things that you learn is basic play action, bootleg right. You see it every preseason by everybody, and Mitchell excelled at that. Right. So it would be a lot more for the defense to handle, but it wouldn't be a lot on the quarterback's plate. So I'd feel pretty good about putting him out there if we had to. Guys, real quickly, we just got a note that we will start up again at 10 o'clock Eastern. 
Approximately. Okay. Don't don't hold me to it. Don't say, hey, Rose. No, you said, you said 10 o'clock. You said you're that guy. I'll be there. I knew you said that. that was coming. I'm ready to watch some football. Really? Okay. Demarcus, I'll give you a shot at the Mitchell Trubisky apple here. I just I always look at I, I've been through so many quarterbacks when it was Drew Bledsoe and it was Romo and then you had, you know, Peyton and, you know, Brock Osweiler. For me, when it gets to a point to where it starts deadening the morale of the team mm. on maybe what the quarterback is doing, and you start thinking about, I, my defense is playing well enough to win games, but who can I put in there to sort of give my team a spark? And that could be that next guy that you guys are talking about coming up in this game that will give us a spark to just, to just put us over the top. We need to score again. So we hey, said Green Bay needs sure. to score again <laughs> in order <laughs> to happen, right? Yeah. yeah well, let me right. just throw this out at you. After this, we'll have 10 days off. Then they take on Minnesota. Then they take on Baltimore. Then defense. they take on Carolina. Defense. Yeah, yeah how's defense. that sound? Before defense. they face the Saints defense. and then they have a bye. So is he ready? That's my question. Mentally, yeah. is he ready? We know athletically, and, and and it doesn't take long for them to adjust the playbook because they did a little bit of the preseason. But there's a lot more than just getting in the huddle for a rookie calling plays, especially when you're when you're facing those veteran defenses. Can you get shell shocked? Off the bat, I mean, you you took oh, of course the I first. If your snap. team's not ready, I mean, you, you got to think about it. We didn't have a lot of veteran guys either, and obviously we had struggles. We had to put some offensive line guys in there that shouldn't have been in there, right? And we all played bad, and I I didn't know what was even good play. I didn't know what it was supposed to look like. We were all learning together, so that was a that was a bad situation. I don't think that Mitchell would be in a bad situation here, just based on the fact that I think they have a pretty good offensive line. I think they have a pretty good defense. They have two good running backs. You can still manufacture some plays. He wouldn't have to do a whole lot to improve. You know, really all he would have to do is buy some time. We've seen Deshaun Watson go in with Houston, right? Makes enough throws down the field accurately, which Mitchell is perfectly capable of doing. But then what does he do? He pulls the football down and sparks his team with a 49-yard touchdown. Yeah. And that's what Mitchell could do to help this team. Watson really impressive up there last week in New England, even though they fell 36-33. Guys, this is good news. Bears coming back out of the uh, locker room, and they're going to head down to the field and start getting loose. According to our guys, uh, if you're over 40, it takes you probably an hour and a half to get loose. Yes. The good news is all these guys are in their 20 and 30s, and they should be okay. So 14-zip, uh, once again, the Packers, courtesy of two Aaron Rodgers touchdown passes. Uh, real quickly, guys, what do we expect to see in the next few minutes? Bears start the second quarter with the football in Packers territory. Willie? I just want to see the Packers stick to the run. Like, based on the run, I don't think they're going to have a lot of uh, success if they keep dropping the back to throw the football. And I, I think the same thing. Safe and stick orderly to your identity. Again, I mean, the game before they had, what, almost 200 yards, purpose yards. Stick with what you know. Run the football. Yeah, just just, just set your mind to it. Be creative with it a little bit. Especially with those two backs back there, you can do stuff with them to make it where you're not just running downhill in the A-gap the whole time. You can be creative and throw it quick, but, yeah. That's the key. I like that. Throw it quick. Yeah. And just move the chains. Keep Aaron Rodgers off the field. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes or no, do we see Mitchell Trubisky tonight? Now, I'm not talking about shots of him on the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> talking about him under center. I'm going to say yes. Wow. Say yes. I'm going to say just the way that I saw Green Bay play early on and the way that I've seen Chicago play, I'm going to say nothing changes. I'm going to leave it up to the quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say I'm yes. I have an opinion, Willie. Really. I, I know, but I'm no. just, you know, he, he knows a little bit more about that okay. position. I just know how to get to the quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right. No? I have nothing to say. I go with the quarterback. All right. Well, I'm going see. with the quarterback. A lot of pressure. Okay. Okay. David find, says find yes, way everybody. Hey, by the way, so, go, Mitch. <laughs> if you're the Bears and John Fox, defensively, what do you do against that guy, Aaron Rodgers? Because you know their game plan without their two starting offensive ta uh, tackles, uh, Bakhtiari and Bulaga. Quick passes. We get it. What does the defense do to combat that? Can I, can I line up d on one side? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can, can you go to the right and I, I go, go to the left? Exactly. Can we keep him in the pocket? Yeah. Yeah. Can we just keep him in the pocket and not let him make those loose throws? We know he's phenomenal in the pocket throwing the ball anyway. But when he escapes the pocket, it puts more pressure on the defensive backs to have to cover longer. Keep him in the pocket. They haven't looked great running the football since Montgomery has left. I mean, the other guy's averaging two yards a carry. So I'm, I think that exactly. Keep him in the pocket. Don't let the run game beat you. Play coverage on the back end. Your guys will eventually get to the quarterback. I know when we played against him, one thing that we did, we had what, Vaughn Miller and we had me on the outside. Make sure you contain him inside of the pocket. Make sure the interior guys get a lot of push so he can't step up and create plays what he does well all the time. Just make sure he stays in the pocket and make him beat you. Don't don't so I understand that. Uh, so the game plan is get two guys that are going to Canton, Ohio, and put them on the outside and make sure 12 stays in the pocket. Perfect. John Fox, I hope that you've been listening. Uh, so guys, let's, let's stretch it out. 
Let's go uh, get loose. Yeah. Packers are up 14 zip. Football is back. Bears, once play resumes, approximately 10 o'clock. You said 10 o'clock. You said 10 at the beginning of the second quarter. <laughs> Jim Nance, Tony Romo, Tracy Wolfson after this. We're back at Lambeau Field, and the team's uh, going back through a warm-up session. Five or six minutes from resuming to start what will be the first play of the second quarter. And the Bears will have the football at the Packers 47. So what did this mean to Chicago this break? Well, Jay Feely had a chance to visit with Coach John Fox. And, Jay, what did you hear? Well, Jim, I did have a chance to talk to John Fox, and he was appreciative of this mini halftime, as he called it, an opportunity to make some adjustments. He said, we're fine. We're good. We're going to go back out there. His players were relaxed, listening to a little bit of music. Kyle Long looked at us as we were talking. He said, we needed that. John looked at us and said, yes, we did, and we're ready to go. Right, Jay, you've got to think if it was an advantage to anyone, it would be the Bears, obviously, because very few things had been going right. They had just picked up a first down to close out the, the first quarter. We'll have the ball just inside uh, uh, you know, well, in Green Bay territory here in the first play of the second quarter when we get started in a couple of minutes. And what are you looking for when we come back after you're going to have what's going to be somewhere around 45-minute delay? I think this helped, obviously, the Bears, but more than anything, it helped Glennon. That when you're on the road and bad things happen early in the game, it just continues to snowball sometimes. Yeah. And you felt it, I felt it, about the whole situation. And it's just not a good environment, a situation for him to be in. This gets to restart his brain. He gets to come back and start playing football. Feels comfortable now. He knows the scheme that Green Bay has decided to run this game. Mm. So he gets to start a football game with knowing the scheme the defense has come up with. That's that helps point. a lot. Okay, Tracy, let's go back to you. Jim, I was told the to start time, 9.01. Both teams have elected to take the full 10-minute warm-up. I spoke to some people coming out of the Green Bay locker room. Room. And the thing was, a lot of players inside were changing their cleats because of the rain. Remember, this field could sometimes be slippery. So that is something certainly to watch for both teams as we begin the game. Jim? Okay, so again, it was, uh, for Chicago's purposes, it was uh, an ugly first quarter. And with the two turnovers and the two touchdowns given up uh, 53 seconds apart. Here's the first one. Adams. Busting right between two defenders, helped by Randall Cobb. And then the turnover forced by Matthews, recovered by Ryan. And then Rodgers would go to Cobb with uh, a little assist on a pick by Adams, returning the favor. And then yet another giveaway here by Chicago. They had actually moved the football inside of the Green Bay 30. Martinez with the recovery. Rodgers was... Six out of ten in that first quarter. 51 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Packers had two takeaways in their first three games and already with two tonight in the first quarter as they score on their opening drive for the third consecutive game. Taking that opening drive, 75 yards and 10 plays. Glenn and Mingwell threw it four times. Three of four, 37 yards. Nothing to speak of out of the... Green, uh, out of the Chicago running game, seven carries for a total of 10 by their backs. You know, Glennon had a similar type of start and performance a little bit in Tampa. He's played pretty good in two games. Last week, not really, can't go off that because they rushed for 250 yards. And so he only threw for 100. But that I don't mind when quarterbacks throw for 100 when you rush for 150 right. because you just need to control the ball. And, you know, you're going to win the football game most of the time and just make a critical play at the end and you win. Yep. In their case, they went over 200, actually, for the first time on the ground since the game back in 2014. But uh, you made a good comparison here. They're other road games so far this season at Tampa. They had four turnovers and they found themselves in a hole they could never recover. They basically got blown out by the Bucks week two. It's interesting because uh, Chicago opened the season playing the defending NFC champion Atlanta Falcons at Soldier Field. They took them to the wire and actually had some chances to win it. Had a couple of drops. That's why I feel like he's going to keep his job, okay? But when they lose another game or two in a row, like if they lose tonight and this goes somewhere south, that's a situation when this team has 11 days before their next game. And this is real similar to John Fox. If you can remember when he was in Denver mm -hmm. with Tebow, it was the sixth game of the year was when they came to Tebow. And they were 1-4. 
and they basically put him out there. Everyone was calling for him, but they morphed the offense into a bootleg kind of let your quarterback run around and move, move the pocket, move the spots. That's what you did, and I think that's what's going to happen with Trubisky. They're going to eventually just move the pocket. They can keep it simple. So there is Trubisky. He's getting wired to listen in as the cost of two quarterbacks, $45 million, that rich contract for Glenn in, in March, and then they made the trade just to move up one spot, made the trade with San Francisco, gave up uh, four picks to move up that one slot. Stunning move, picked Trubisky just a little more than a month and a half later. And they did it for a reason. I like what Ryan Pace, the general manager, did. You're going to get one quarterback, right? I think more teams should try and take advantage.